Hi there and welcome to another geometry video in the series Maths for Programmers. Previously in this series we saw how to calculate the area of a polygon using the concept of vector cross product. In this video we will once again use the concept of vector cross product to solve another fundamental problem in geometry. How to find the direction of a point from a line segment. So let's say I have a line segment AB and a point P. What we want to know is if we are traveling along the line segment from A to B. So I'll draw an arrow in this direction to indicate the direction in which we are moving. So if we are moving from A to B, we want to know whether P is to our left, which it is in this case, or whether P is to our right. The point P doesn't have to lie between A and B. So here we have a point P which actually lies much behind the line segment AB. However, this point still counts as being to the right of the line segment AB. Similarly, we could have another point P prime that is located much after the line segment AB. However, this point is also considered to be on the right of the line segment AB. What we are trying to say is that if we extend this line segment infinitely in both directions and we are still traveling in the general direction of line segment AB, then any point in this half will be considered to be on the left of the line segment and any point in this bottom half would be considered to be on the right of the line segment AB. This is a very fundamental problem and is commonly encountered for example when giving directions in an online map. So let's say we have a user at point A who actually wants to reach the point C. Now a good set of directions to give this user would be to ask him to first reach point B and then take a right turn in order to reach point C. How do we know that the user has to take a right turn at B and not a left turn? Well, this is because the point C lies to the right of line segment AB. Knowing the direction of a point from a line segment also acts as the building block to solve more complicated problems such as finding if two line segments intersect and also finding the convex hull of a set of points. So we have with us two points A and B which together represent the line segment AB and we also have a third point P and we need to tell whether P is to the left of AB or to the right. In order to do that we first need to fix a mathematical representation for the points AB and P. So we will first choose a coordinate system. Now the choice for coordinate system is very important and can make it difficult or easy depending on your choice to solve the problem. For most two-dimensional problems, and this is a two-dimensional problem, choosing the Cartesian plane as the coordinate system is a natural choice and also a good choice. So let's draw this diagram on an arbitrary Cartesian plane. So in this plane we have two perpendicular axes, x and y, and we also have numbers marked along both axes to help us identify the coordinate value of points. So in order to represent the point A, we can simply use its x coordinate value which is say roughly minus 30 and its y coordinate value which is say roughly plus 10. So in this case we can say x A is uh, minus 30 comma 10. Similarly the rough coordinate values for B would be say 29 comma minus 15 and P can be represented mathematically as the ordered pair 15 comma 28. As we said at the beginning of this video, we want to use the concept of cross product from vector algebra to solve this problem. And now that we have a mathematical representation of all the points, we can proceed to use the cross product. However, cross product can only be applied to a pair of vectors at a time. And here we have three points. So what we can do is let's just ignore the point A for now. Now we are left with only two points B and P. So let's take the cross product of B and P. So B cross P mathematically is equal to the X coordinate of B into the Y coordinate of P minus the Y coordinate of B into the X coordinate of P. Now the cross product has an interesting property. Let's label the origin of the coordinate system, the point where the X as well as the Y coordinates have a value of 0 as O or the origin. And now let's draw the angle BOP. Now the cross product is positive if and only if this angle is counterclockwise and conversely the cross product is negative if and only if this angle is clockwise. We can quickly verify it for this given example. Here we can quite clearly see that the angle BOP is counterclockwise 
So we expect the cross product to be positive. And if we calculate the value of the cross product, it comes up to be 1037, which is indeed positive. Let's swipe that out and let's extend the line segment OB infinitely in both directions. Now we can make an interesting observation. Any point P that is in this upper half, if we notice the angle this point makes with the line segment BO, so if we take BOP for any point that is in this upper half, the angle will be counterclockwise, which means the value of the cross product is going to be positive. Similarly, if we look at any point in this lower half, the angle that this point makes, so if you take BOP for a point that is in this lower half, the angle will always be clockwise, which means the expected value of the cross product will be negative. Now, suppose that we had a line segment AB, where A was at the origin of the coordinate system. Now we can just remove this O and replace it by A without making any difference anywhere. And now let's say we're traveling in the direction of AB. We can see quite clearly that the points P that have a positive cross product, where B cross P is positive, are exactly the same points that are to the left of AB. And the points that have a negative cross product are nothing but those points which are to the right of AB. So given a line segment AB and a point P, if A happens to be at the origin of the coordinate system, we can find out the direction of P very easily. We can simply take the cross product B cross P and if it's positive that means P is to the left of AB and if it's negative that means P is to the right. If we now go back to our original problem where we have a line segment AB where A is not at the origin, how can we go about solving this problem? Well a simple solution is to translate the coordinate system so that the origin O lies exactly at A. To do this, we can subtract the coordinate values of A from all three points A, B and P. Of course, when we subtract A from itself, we get zero, which is why A becomes the origin. And when we complete the translation, we'll have values for P as 45, 18 and the value for B as 59, minus 25. Since A is now at the origin, to decide whether P is to the left of the line segment AB or to the right, we can simply compute the cross product B cross P and if it is positive, we'll know that P is to the left, which it is in this case, or if it is negative, we'll know that P is to the right. One interesting case that we haven't explored is what happens when the cross product is exactly zero. In that case, P is neither to the left nor to the right of line segment AB. In fact, if we were to extend line segment AB in both directions infinitely, then P would be lying somewhere along this line. Now let's take a look at some C++ code that finds the direction of a point from a line segment. The first thing we'll need to do is figure out how to represent a point in our program. And since C++ is an object-oriented language, a good decision is to use a struct or a class. So we'll declare a struct called point that has two member variables x and y. And these of course represent the x and y coordinates of the point itself. Notice that we use the double data type to store the x and y because uh, the coordinates of a point can have any real number as their value, not necessarily just integers. Since we talk about left and right directions in the program a lot, let's declare some constants so that we don't have to use strings everywhere. So here we declare three integers as constants, one to represent the left direction, another to represent the right direction, and a third one for the case when the point is exactly on the line. Okay, now we'll declare a function called getDirection, which takes the three points A, B, and P as input. A and B, of course, represent the line segment AB, and P is the point whose direction we want to know. And this function will return an int, and this integer will be one of these three constants, left, right, or on the line, to mean that P is either to the left of AB, or to the right of AB, or exactly on the line containing the line segment AB. Since the point A may not necessarily lie on the origin, the first thing we need to do is subtract the value of point A from points B and P. As of now, we don't know how to do subtraction, but let's just assume that a function subtract exists, which can solve our problem. So in that case, we can just do something like this. We can say B is equal to subtract of B comma A. We'll take this to mean that B is B minus A there should exist a function called subtract, which given two points returns the second point subtracted from the first point. 
Similarly, we can also say P is equal to subtract of P comma A. So at this point in our program, we now are in a situation where both B and P have been translated by the value of A and A is effectively now at the origin. So now we need to calculate the cross product of B and P. We need to calculate B cross P. Just like we assumed that there was a function called subtract, we'll also assume that there's a function that can get us the cross product of B comma P. So then we can write some code like this. We can say cross product is equal to the value of B cross P. And we'll assume that another function called get cross product exists, which will compute B cross P for us. The remaining part of the code is now quite simple. If the cross product is greater than zero, then we know that P must be to the left of AB. So we can return left. Similarly, if the cross product is less than zero, then P must be to the right of AB. So we return right. And if the cross product is neither greater than zero nor less than zero, of course, this means that the cross product must be exactly zero. And in this case, P must be lying on the line containing the line segment AB. So we will return the constant on the line. The functions subtract and get cross product are quite simple to write. So we can take a quick look at them. So I'll just erase this and we can see these functions. So the get cross product function takes two points P1 and P2 and simply calculates the cross product using the formula that we saw previously. Similarly, the subtract function takes two points P1 and P2, creates a new point called result, which contains the value of P2 subtracted from P1 for both the X and Y coordinates. So in this video, we found out how to solve a very fundamental geometry problem using a program, which is finding the direction of a point from a line segment. And this has many important uses, such as telling a user on an online map that he needs to take a particular kind of turn, like a right or left turn. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.